Delphi Keshabira has spent the entire night underground looking for gold, from 6 in the evening until 7 in the morning. That's a normal working day for him. The gold rush drew him to this mine in the eastern Congolese province of South Kivu eight years ago. Of course it's dangerous. We do prop up the shaft, but stones still sometimes fall down from above. We also have to be very careful not to injure ourselves in the dark. And the further down you go, the harder it is to breathe. Oxygen is in short supply. At times you really have to gasp for breath. Kashabira and the other workers here practice what's called artisanal mining. They work with hand tools on a small scale. In the hard to reach mountains in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo, almost half the mining of minerals is done this way. The problem, however, is that many of these mines are controlled by armed rebels. And that means the miners work under conditions that amount to slavery. For a good three years, the United Nations, in cooperation with international partners, has been sending inspectors to the mines. The idea, mines not controlled by militias are certified conflict-free. That way, international companies can prove their minerals haven't helped finance rebel wars. The Nia Morale mine is expected to get its certificate in the coming months. The process of certifying a mine site is a take longer process. First, you have to make sure that there are no armed groups. There's no uncontrolled element of the military. So this mine site, in March of 2013, there were a lot of military incursion. But uh, IOM worked with the military region. This mine site was demilitarized in March of 2014. To date, however, that's true of very few of the estimated 2,000 small mines in the Eastern DRC. And no one knows how many of them are controlled by the rebel groups like the FDLR, the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda. That rebel group originally comes from the neighboring country of Rwanda and is considered one of the most brutal militias in the region. A worker from an FDLR-controlled mine is willing to speak to us. The worst things are the murders and the rapes. It's purely arbitrary. They take what they want when they want it and they kill whenever they want to. Later in the interview, he also tells us that the FDLR ringleaders made him a foreman in the mine. He had to help them collect gold from the workers. It's hard to distinguish between victims and culprits, even for the UN, which has tried in vain for 16 years to restore peace to the Eastern DRC. But one thing is clear, many of the profiteers are based abroad. We travel to the neighboring country of Uganda, which is where many of the illegal mineral deals are made. In the capital Kampala, we meet someone who knows the business very well. She brings sellers and buyers together, customers who are willing to seal lucrative deals over the conflict commodities from the DRC. Some are serious businessmen who see an opportunity for quick money because um, the resale value is very high once the gold is melted. So others just want to do this one once in a lifetime venture for something quick, real quick, and go back to whatever business they're doing. Then others are in that habit of buying and trading gold, just like that. She says getting fake guarantees of origin for the gold and other mineral resources is rarely a problem and that with the right contacts in the ministries and enough money for bribes, anything's possible. Many of her customers come from Asia and Europe. They're just doing business. Some of them are caught in that kind of business. And they know Congo is a failed state. You can't always think about somebody's going to get hurt. Where is this money going? Whose gold is it? It's very hard. Otherwise, you want to do any business. And yet, at the end of the day, Congo has all the material, the stock they need for their business. The main criticism of the certification project is that it's unrealistic, that the rampant corruption in the region means even wrongly certified resources make it onto the world market with official approval. In addition, critics say that in the eastern DRC only about a hundred mines have been certified conflict-free so far. 
They add that it makes things unnecessarily hard for workers in the many small mines that aren't on the international monitors' lists. Mine worker Delphi Kashabira doesn't consider those reasons not to try. He says he's seen with his own eyes how certification can help him and his fellow miners. Mining has become more difficult here recently because we have to dig deeper into the earth to find gold. But our working conditions have improved a lot. After the long working day, Kashabira and his co-workers have to wash their stones. It's the moment of truth, because only now can they see if there's really gold in them. Today wasn't an especially productive one for the workers. But at least here the foreman is no longer a rebel who will take their hard-earned gold away from them.